Yep, so hi everybody. Um, it's Jen Guarino, Fearless Watercolors. Uh, welcome to um, our Savannah horse and buggy scene. I think it was Savannah, not Charleston. I, I can't, I have to go back and really check my photos, but I was there a number of years ago and I just love the architecture and the uniqueness of these cities were so wonderful. I think it was Savannah actually. And um, I knew I painted one day, but what I didn't want to do was really get bogged down with so many of the details. So that's a big part of what we're going to be doing today is breaking down um, how to simplify certain areas and amp up other areas and still have it speak to it being architectural and um, a particular place uh, in, in the uh, south. Of course, the palm trees say south too. Um, so if you... Uh, don't have it already. What I have here is a pile. I do have a pile of little pieces of cut out paper. And what I do is I just take old backs of paintings and I cut them apart and I use them uh, in a way to get an architectural mark and not have it be um, more complicated with a brush. So you're going to want to have some paper and some scissors um, handy with you. And um, and I will turn it over my, to my camera and I will be going back and forth. Of course, always let me know if I'm off camera, if you can't see something, I appreciate that. So this is our scene today. Uh, my cyan wasn't working quite as well as I would have hoped it would be, but um, that's neither here nor there. Um, I'm gonna have a number 10 brush. I'm probably gonna have my number 20 brush and um, maybe a couple of angled brushes for the palms um, on the uh, palm trees. And I did not mask anything. I think anything that we have here, either the writing we could do with a white marker, if you have one of those white markers, I think that would be very nice. Or, um, uh, and if you masked it, that's fine. You know, that's, that's certainly something that you uh, always have that option of doing. I'm just in love with having a rigger handy. So that's um, also what I'm gonna have ready to go. And my regular watercolor set and watered and everything ready to go. So um, the first thing I know that we see, a, you know, different colors going on with the, uh, the um, buildings. And I do like that idea, but none of them do I wanna leave white. So I wanna differentiate the white, um, the, the light building from a white building. So I'm gonna put that over there. And what we're gonna do first is put a wash along our, um, our buildings in the back. Um, <clears throat> I, I sent you guys the um, uh, contour drawing. You could see there's a lot of architectural pieces going on, but not a tremendous amount, not certainly as much as is in the photograph. So let's go, and I'm going to go right through the palm trees because you can kind of see through them. Those will be darker than our building. So I'm going to start at the top with that very peak that's going on there. And um, let me get a little color on my brush just to get us kind of going. And I'm seeing sort of a blue, you know, I was trying to isolate the colors that I think we should use with this. And I think I'm going to keep it... Um, uh, blue, red, yellow, which is not a usual color combination for me, the primaries, but I think it'll work um, uh, really well. Uh, so, um, because from the blue, yellow, red, we can make every color. So I'm gonna start on the top here and I'm going to add some of my blue, okay? And I do, of course, like the idea of leaving little sparky whites when you kind of can feel that um, happening and that those little holidays that we love so much. And before too much time goes by, I do want to add a little bit of red to this just to tone it down a little bit. And a little bit of yellow. So I'm using my, um, I used my uh, ultramarine. I used my uh, deep red. And now I'm just gonna add a little bit of my yellow that is my Quin Gold, just to keep it sort of colorful and yet um, toned down. And I'm gonna bring that into that first area there that just invite those colors to sort of come down and mingle and go right across your, 
your, um, your, your rooftops there. And I'm even gonna go into this other one over here. So I'm just really taking the same colors that I have here. If you don't have enough color on your brush, just add a little bit more once you wet it and just drop a little bit more color in. Now this one building is the, a reddish color. So I am gonna take maybe um, a, 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 my, my red and my uh, yellow and I'm gonna go, I see that those peaks are sort of a nice uh, blue color. I'm just gonna switch to a smaller brush because what I wanna do here also is keep some of these really nice um, uh, um, <clears throat> whites on the, on the, on the um, windows. So I'm creating sort of an orangey color. I'm not really worried about wet going into wet because I could, I just feel we could always go back in and identify that a little bit deeper if we want to. And you can feather it down right over where your palm trees are, right? We could go through the windows and right through the palms because the palm trees will be, um, you know, a darker color and we will build those with our yellow and our blue. Go right through the palm trees, don't save them, and come on down to your next area below the palm trees, which I'm gonna drop in a little bit more red and a little bit of yellow. So I'm not pre-mixing on my uh, palette, I am inviting those colors to sort of happen on my paper. And um, I know we talk about this a lot, but uh, for anybody who needs a little refresher, I do that because I love seeing the colors mingle and on the paper, I just love that. And it looks so much fresher to me than over mixing my paints on my, um, on my palette. I'll mix sometimes, but I prefer not to. And I think I went into my other building a little bit. I'm just gonna soften that. I think I went into my, my yellowy building. So I'm just gonna use a little bit more yellow on either side of the buildings. And again, we don't have to, um, you know, I'm gonna save those windows cause I'm gonna show you how I wanna do the windows. I'm going through my palm trees cause that's a texture I wanna add later on. And I'm just giving it a nice wash. So I'm using more of my yellow that got a little red on my brush, but again, I'm not worried about that because you know, it's the photographs reality, your painting does not have to be. So I say this, I know I say this a lot, but nobody's gonna say, wait a minute, I know that building and that's not the colors. <laughs> You don't have to worry about things like that because you are interpreting this. You are an artist and you get to interpret this as you want to. And so I really do like the idea of playing with color as I always do. Um, this building is on the whiter side. So I'm gonna go back to my Quinn Gold and just add a little bit of, maybe I'll add a little blue to this one. Maybe I'll go a little cooler just to give it a little bit of variation. maybe a little cool, maybe a little red and blue, and that'll make a nice purple. I think it's very easy when we're doing these kinds of paintings as that we see all these colors. So we think we need to use every color in our palette to achieve it. And um, I'm sort of under the feeling that I rather limit my colors um, to be just a few so that I'm not just reproducing what I see on my page, but I am interpreting it. And so this last building, I'm gonna go into back to like an orangey color. Sort of going around my windows, through the palm trees. And that, that building is a little bit yellowier. So just gonna go a little orangier with it. And that's a nice light wash. So I know we see a green awning, we see an orange sign, we see a lot of colors. 
And I really want to, um, what I want to do, my goal today is to have you have you certainly you you know create these colors and i think that that will be a really good um, exercise for us to do and of course this is a dark this area here that i'm underneath the awning so remember what i always say is i don't save my darks i paint right through them because i know i'm going to go darker yet with them okay so that is an initial wash. And certainly this was gonna get darker under here. We're gonna do the awnings, but I just like the idea of just having this nice wash that kind of comes down and goes into every area. The tops of the windows, I wanna do those with our, uh, our pieces of paper, but these three arches that are right here, I wanna get those in sooner than later. So I'm gonna to switch to a slightly smaller brush. I guess this is a number six. And I'm going to go back to my blue, red, yellow combo. And I'm going to paint those arches right now. And you know what, I'll go a little closer for you guys so that you could see what I'm doing. And I'll just zoom in a little bit more. There we go. So I'm just, there's some beautiful architecture on these. And I'm just dipping my brush into all three of my colors, just like we did up here. And just create a really great shape. So a little blue, a little red, and a little yellow. And of course, when we use our primary colors, they make all the other colors, but they what they also do is they tone each other down. And so we end up getting this more muted um, approach, which I think is really nice. So I'm just doing the three arched windows. I think they're really beautiful architecture there, really so nice. So it was one of the things that I just, just walking around and you see such beautiful things. So that's the blue, drop a little red in, it's still wet and it's moving around. And um, I like that uh, looseness that's happening. I think that that's really good. Uh, I, I, you know, um, so much of watercolor is about controlling. And I'm always looking forward to when it goes out of control <laughs> and it gives me an unexpected result that I had not planned on having. And what ends up happening for me is I have learned that those are my, my most favorite spots of a painting. And I look forward to creating more opportunities for that to happen. And so when you're working wet into wet, such as this area is right here, it does give us that opportunity to have some kind of a little bit of an unexpected blossom uh, coming on, moving into other areas. And I think that that's just, you know, fabulous. So I look forward to that. And, and I, like I said, I, I have found that the more that I do it, the happier I am it, with my paintings because, and I think I, you know, I know uh, certainly most of your work enough to say that um, you're capable of handling a whole lot of detail. And now that I'm gonna use my, um, I'm gonna use my uh, thing for on these. Uh, let's switch over to over here, these arched windows here, which are beautiful. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just create those arches with my blue. And once it's wet, I'm just gonna drop other colors in. These are straight lines. You should be able to grab those pretty easily uh, without using your um, paper as a template. I have no idea what these little gizmos are on here. So I'm just, when you don't know when, what something is, all you have to do is remember to paint the shape. So it, you don't have to sit and figure out, well, I don't know what's going on up here. You just need to say, well, it's there. Um, we didn't question it in the photo. So let me just paint it 
and um, and let it read as it's, you know, as it does in the photo, it's just a shape. And so I'm just really painting these shapes right now. That's all I'm really doing. I, they're little arched windows with little points and I'm not really sure what the heck they are. But, you know, I don't want all that much detail on this side because I don't want my eye drawn over there too much. So just a little bit. I certainly want them to be there and I want them to be reading as windows. But I don't need to explain exactly how these little architectural details are, you know, with, with enormous precision. And that's just your choice as a painter is how you want to approach a painting. And of course, we always have that option of going back in and adding more details later, which I love to do. But what I find happens very often is once I have the painting done, I am happy with less detail. It's always easier to go back in and add detail. It's hard to, um, once you start painting with a great amount of detail, you know, then, you know, it, it just could look, it could look fussy. Some people just love that high realism. And I, I'm a little bit more inclined to prefer a little interpretation. So, okay, this is all drying really nicely. Uh, let me see where I want to go to. I think it would be nice while this is all drying and I want to do those architectural windows with you. Let's get a wash on the bottom part here. So the first thing I want to do is get a little bit of yellow into this awning here. But it's a little bit of a dirty yellow. I don't want any of the colors to be too pure. Why? Um, because it's not pure yellow. If you look at it, it really isn't. So I guess I'm just following suit with that. I'm going to build this little arch, this uh, little architectural separator here with a little bit of blue. It is bleeding into my awning ever so slightly. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> so you get to decide. I did put this little number 51 here in that oval. And so I will now paint around that oval. I do have the palm tree there. So I do want a light side to the palm tree. So this is going to be darker than the palm tree. And then this whole area under here goes dark. So that's underneath that number 51 on that all the way on the, the left side. Jan, can I just ask you what blue you're using right now? Um, well, it's kind of a dirty blue, Angie, um, but I, um, it is a, um, it, I'm using uh, my ultramarine blue. I'm using an ultramarine blue. I'm using my Quinn gold yellow and I'm using my deep red. So I'm gonna be using all of those colors to create these darks that are gonna go underneath here. So I'm just dipping the tip of my brush into all three of those colors. That's the back of the car, by the way. That's what that is there. And I'll definitely go through creating a car with you guys. Now for underneath here, you're gonna to wanna to charge this up with a little bit more color. And I guess we should get that um, palm tree in sooner than later. The more colors you drop in, the deeper it's gonna be, the more they're gonna mingle, and the deeper it's gonna go. And when you put these marks in these areas like that, what I would recommend is, we don't wanna paint all of this signage area that we have, right? We wanna just suggest it. So what will help for you to suggest it is if you, um, uh, 
just drop in color and indicate like a little something kind of going on there. So if I were to drop more yellow into here, I think I have to fill up my well with some yellow. Um, if I drop colors in here, if I drop my red, my orange or my, uh, my red or my yellow or my blue, it's gonna blossom out and it will create the impression of something going on. Okay, I'm gonna carry it across to that separation of the top part of the building to the bottom part. That's just my dirty blue. And I say dirty only because I'm just, the, it, all these colors are kind of on my brush. And I'm leaving little highlighty whites in my, um, in my, uh, Um, the, in the molding here, sorry, I sometimes I get when I talk and I paint at the same time, I lose track of my words. <laughs> so just leave little highlighty whites if you if you want to. I always really like to do that. I think it just sparks up a painting so nicely. So it's just my ultramarine, my red, my deep red, and my quin gold. And now there's a little bit of a separation. And then there's these windows and all this stuff going on. I personally am not interested in painting that. So I am just going to, this is the palm tree that I really have to get that palm tree in, but I'm just gonna keep dropping in all my colors and I'm just gonna imagine something is going on there with my colors. So meaning there's- Jan, I'm sorry to bother you. Can you let Meryl in? She's waiting to try and get in. Oh, I, I thought I admitted her. I'm sorry. Thank you. I, I thought I did. Hi, Meryl. Sorry, I thought I let you in. <laughs> so what I do want to do is these horses are white. So I do want to go around their ears and all of the things that are going on, you know, um, in there. And so I'm just really having a lot of fun just watching my... Um, my colors mix and mingle as I'm going along. So Meryl, I know you came in a little late. I'm just gonna share with you what we're doing is, is just using our blue, red, and yellow today. We'll be adding some other colors, but for now it's just, I'm really sticking with primaries. And um, uh, these darker areas are created with uh, the combination of the three mixing on the paper themselves. And I'm just going to suggest some of these things, but I really want to go around the horses. Thank you. You're welcome, Meryl. <laughs> I waited as long as I could for you. So when you drop these colors in, they are going to create uh, some interesting um, blossoms and marks and backwashes and, and things like that. So, um, so let those things sort of do the speaking for you on these um, on these window panes. I, cause I, and I think that that would be uh, something that would, oh, you know, really throw somebody off, you know, really like, oh my God, how am I gonna do all of that? Well, the answer is don't. <laughs> Don't feel like you have to. Don't do it if you don't want to. Um, it's not necessary for the story. So let's talk ab that, about that. What is the story here? What are we trying to say? Well, to me, it was the contrast of the horse and buggy and the car. You know, that was like, you know, these two modes of transportation that sort of, um, you know, are sitting here and, um, you know, and so that that's to me that's the story and that's where i want to keep my story so it's not about these window fronts and all of that going on at all it's there their awnings we know their awnings so that's that's all really um ex self-explanatory in my book and so you know in approaching a painting like this you know you get to make those choices 
and simplify and find ways to simplify if that's you know where you want your painting to sort of um, go to. And, and I will say this, that most people that um, I paint with, that paint with me, uh, they're looking to be looser, not tighter. Now I'm gonna invite some of this color to come into my palm tree a little bit. You could leave like a little white highlight. I left like a little white highlight on one side and wrap around the car a little bit. Because there's sort of a brownish color. So, you know, I think that'll work just fine. And we'll get into the palms in a second. Feather that up. So when you end a mark and you don't want to have a hard edge, just feather it. So that was just taking that edge of the top of the palm tree and just feathering it up into what will be all of the palms. That's very colorful. And for those of you who remember all the times we did our trucks, the at the, the one thing that we have that ties us together is going to be our contrast. Okay. I'm going to continue doing the Elvis lounge. <laughs> we did not go in, so I did not meet Elvis. I'm going to take mostly blue on this one. To indicate a little bit of architecture what you want to do is just leave little white marks, little white sparky holidays. That's how you get around having so much detail or worrying about all the details. And so now what I'm thinking about when I'm doing this is I'm also thinking about, you know, how blue do I want to be? Do I want it to be a little greener blue? If you want it to be a little greener, all you have to do is add a little yellow. I really love that red fringe top. I don't know if you guys saw, but that is a fringe it's fringe on the red. So I really love that. I really want to do that. <laughs> so just to tone my blue down a little bit, I am adding a tiny bit of yellow because it does look a little turquoise-ish to me. But rather than running for my turquoise, I'm trying to keep it uh, more on a simple, because it's such a um, involved uh, painting, a photograph for us to interpret. I'm trying to keep it on the simpler side and use less colors and just use my primaries, which is not something we do that often. But you know, I like to shake it up a little bit with you guys. The Elvis Lounge, I love it. Um, so if you start with yellow, you could drop in your blue. If you start with your blue, drop in your yellow. And because this Elvis lounge is yellow, I could go pretty much right through it and tool that out later. Add a little red so it turns a little orange. I love the scroll work that's in these towns. It's so beautiful. I'm just on the top, arc, that little archy, scrolly thing that's on the top. I think that's a beautiful detail. It's just off center. So I have a feeling that I'm going to be going in and doing some nice detail work on that just because I think it's just such a gorgeous thing. 
So I, while I'm, I'm painting it right through now, it's gonna dry light and we'll definitely have some ability to go in and add some nice uh, details right up there. So just, you know, to reiterate, I'm not pre-mixing any colors. Everything is mixing on the paper. Let me back out of it so you can see where I am. So that's my top. I have tint on all of the buildings and we're just sort of building this underneath area here on this building, here, um, which is the primary building really. That's the one that's, you know, the Elvis lounge. So, yeah. And again, I'm sort of letting the colors you know, um, go over areas and not really worrying about stain with any lines. You know, I had a quote I wanted to read to you guys. I don't know where it went to. It was about, oh, I don't, I'm sure I can't find my, find it right now, but it had to do with, you know, when you have a line, um, you know, to what extent do you want to stay within it. And, you know, we're not doing coloring books. So, you know, that I think that that really does give us a lot of um, room to go beyond the lines. Make it more painterly, interpretive. Just holding on to some of these whites here because they really do, are, you know, do have some nice archy shapes. They're nice arches, so you want those. It's so distinctive. And I think that that's an interesting way to think about it, that, um, yeah, there's a lot of building and, and a lot of things going on here, but what's distinctive? That, you know, I don't, I know we talk about it in different ways. It's sort of a different way of talking about it and thinking about it is, um, you know, just reproducing the things that are, ex you know, that speak to you, that are distinctive, that sort of amp up a particular place. Um, what's the story? What's the name of your painting? I remember um, doing a workshop and um, in the city, was, I don't know, two years ago now? Was it last year? I can't even remember. I think it was like a year and a half ago. And before we started, we talked about what's the name of the painting? What are we calling it? And that becomes your focus. So, you know, in, in this case, I sort of, you know, um, told you what mine was, which was, you know, but I don't think that's the name per se, but by naming it, horse and buggy does say that that is an indicator of what I want to focus on. I don't think that's quite the name, but. <laughs> and you could see this is really getting nice and dark here. So let me go in a little closer and it's getting nice and dark and I just keep going in. And if it gets a little too light, drop a little bit of your colors in just to deepen it and charge her up, just charge it up a little bit. I'll just go back over some areas that I see got a little lighter than I wanted. And remember, if you didn't hold on to your whites, have no fear because there are secondary lights that you can always access at another time. I wanna get this palm tree in before too much time goes by. And I'm just gonna invite some of this color to come into the palm tree. And you could separate it out with a little bit of a highlight on one side, bigger highlight on the other. So the light's sort of coming from there. And the three colors will tone each other down and give us a nice color that looks not like brown, but something like brown. Feather off the top, 
so you don't end up with a hard edge. <clears throat> and I do wanna do the area that is in between, under, you know, underneath the, um, the fringe wagon there because I feel like all of these are connected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, there's some poles here and I, I'm just gonna save them. You know, um, if you don't, don't worry about it because we can always go back and add a little bit of white with our brush or a little Jean Brillion or a little bit of um, or yellow or, or white marker. So if you lost your whites, have no fear. We're going to get them back. We always have a chance to get them back. And we could go straight into the buggy, but let's just hold off just now and just get that area behind. And the guy, that's his head. I'm just gonna sort of indicate it. Heads should not be round. They should be rectangular. Just looks more natural. A round head is more for like a kid and not for an adult. So just know that when you're doing that, we, we think heads are round, but they're really not. Or let's put it this way. Um, they're more rectangular than we uh, generally uh, interpret them to be. And when they are too round, they look a little on the faker side. They look, they don't look like they belong within a landscape. So that's the second guy there. I think they're sleeping. I think the one guy was scratching his head or something, but I did not put that in. I didn't even realize that he was doing that until I and to draw it last night. And all these modulations in color that are going on in my background is really all I need to say something's going on, you know, and I don't have to um, depict every window with perfection. This is the awning, that greeny awning on the right side. So what you want to get is that the nice loopy And it's absolutely fine to outline the area that you want to paint, but make sure you carry it through to be um, so you don't hold, you don't hold on to those out, outlines. You don't want to see them. You don't want to see the effort that went into painting this. That that's the way I look at it. I don't want to see the effort when I look at a painting. I want it to look like it poured out of me and it was effortless. And when I do that, I'm very happy. So this, this outline is something that I don't want to see in the finished product. So I just make sure I bring my brush right up to that area and let it mingle. And then this sort of comes down here. I'm just kind of going around the buggy. Probably if I was not painting this um, in a class, I might just go straight into the buggy, but um, I'm going to take a pause and um, see where everybody's at.
And the last thing I'm gonna do is under the door all the way on the right for now. For now, just wanna get some of these nice, and I want, cause, because I wanna see what happens when um, it, they're drying, if, they, if they're gonna read the way I want them to read. I'm thinking they will, it looks to me like they are. I'm not gonna know until I get further into the painting because, and I do say this often, is that there's a point in every painting what that I'm doing that it just looks like a hot mess and I'm not sure what's gonna happen with the painting until I get a little further into it. So just know that that's just really a, a, a function of sort of working this way, but it's also knowing that you have the tools that you need to um, get yourself out of trouble. into your painting. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I would like to do a little bit of the um, architecture on the top. So what you want to do is have some of your pieces of paper, if you have ones that you've used before, to create. It should measure um, let me go in a little closer for you guys. It should measure, like if I was doing these windows, this width should give me a nice angle for the window, the, a window pane. So this one looks pretty good to me. So I think it's bending a little bit, even though I'm using 300. Okay. So to do this, you can either mix in your palette your colors, or you could paint onto your paper. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm just gonna mix a little bit of blue because the windows seem to be like a light blue, right? So I'm gonna take my blue, I'm gonna put it in my palette and I'm just gonna add it with a little bit of water. Maybe I'll add a tinge of red to it, just a little bit, just to warm it up a little bit. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna, let me get this in the video show you. So here, sorry, I have a very messy palette. Can you switch the camera so we can see your palette? Yeah, I just brought it over here. So here I am in this corner. This is my blue. Okay. And, um, and I'm what I'm going to do is a couple of things I could do the window panes by just following a little bit of an angle up. If I don't get the whole thing, like that kind of skipped right there, I kind of like that because it sort of says uh, there's a little reflection going on. Okay, so I use anything that happens to my advantage, <laughs> pretty much. And I'm putting this up on an angle because I'm following the angle of the architecture. So there, I'm just dipping it into here and I'm just, can everybody see what's going on here? Just a little bit. And it, it you know what, it, it does take a little bit of practice. I, I should have actually said, if you wanted to have a scrap piece of paper to sort of practice on a little bit, it's not a bad idea to do this. If I'm, I'm, I'm used to working this way. So for me, it sort of feels like really comfortable, but it may be something that you need to practice a little bit. I can also, while I'm still on these windows, I could measure the tops. It looks like it's about the same. I'm going to add a little bit more blue in here. Go a little deeper. Maybe add a little bit of my red. Just a little bit, just to tone it down a little bit. Oh, got some other colors going on there. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, and then dip my edge in, and then I'm gonna build some of this architecture across the top. Let's see if you can see this. Okay, here we go. So again, my paper is on the angle of that molding. And that's how you get that illusion of perspective. And all of these are sort of going on the same angle. So you wanna be sure you hold on to that angle. Yeah. 
And if you want to build a little bit on the edges, just to give it a little bit more architectural feel, you could just tap these coming down. They don't even have to connect. Mine are not connected. I don't care if they're connected. It's giving me the illusion of a window. And that's really all I really want to achieve here. You could take it and you could drag it a little bit. If you need to go a little smaller, have other pieces, you know, as you move over, you might have to go to a smaller piece of paper. So this would carry over right here. We're probably not going to see that too much because we have our palm trees that we're doing. But this is how I like to do windows. And let me back out and just show it to you how nice that looks. It really does come across so beautifully. All right, I'm gonna to go to these ones over here. There's some really beautiful things going on up here. Mine sort of bled and ran all over, but I'm so not worried about that because I wanna go back in. I know I wanna build that stronger later on, probably with some indigo. So if your palette, I, I got a lot of colors on my palette. I just don't really um, clean it. <laughs> As some people do. I'm really not that good with that. But um, a little bit, uh, my blue washed down. I, I'm adding a hint of red just to, just to purple it up a little bit. And that's a good color. And I got a lot of good water in, in this so that it's pretty washed out. Dragging my, tapping my, my paper into there. And I'm just going to build my windows now. So this is vertically straight, but I'm moving up on an angle. To follow the perspective. And it's amazing to me how quickly we have windows that look like something. And I'll do the ones underneath here on the bottom. They're just slight little suggestions. What a great way to suggest architecture and windows and window panes without getting really overly um, fussed up by it because it's really not the conversation. That's not, it's there. I know I need to put it in, I want it in but I don't really want to take a whole lot of enormous effort to do it. I have windows under here that I wanna suggest. Again, just make sure you go up on an angle. That's really the most important part. And there's a lot of, um, you know, palm trees here. So, you know, that's gonna be hidden, but the palms will, you know, show through in spots. So you wanna be sure you have them in there. And you always have that option of using it again, just to stamp some little areas of, there's a beautiful arch there that I want to be sure that I put in. So I'm going to leave that alone, but, um, it's a nice way to suggest architecture. Let me back out and show you how quickly we have windows. So that's a really nice way to um, suggest architecture to suggest window panes, to suggest little areas that, um, you know, and a lot of people say to me, I don't have a steady hand or whatever. Well, you don't need to have one. When you work this way, your paper is doing the work for you, which is what I love. Man, I just love that. So um, it's one of the few times I'll go in my palette and I'll find, <laughs> you know, some things, you know, 
things that are in my palette to, you know, paint, paint in my palette. I don't use that in my palette for mixing very much. Oh, and I have this big window over here. I'm going to get that one. So again, measure your, that's a little too big. So I, I have so many of these from different classes and I make them all the time. So you could just take your brush and paint on the edge or I find 300 is really the best because it doesn't curl as much and it, 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 it holds on to the um, paint a little better and it doesn't really um, curl as much. You have like a nice sturdy edge with that. But, you know, um, any old painting, any old piece of paper, I save all my scraps. Because I want just the right size to go into these areas. So that's how I really love doing these fun architectural areas. And it pays to do what you can to the, um, you know, to the buildings and the windows now, because once we add the palms, we're really not going to go back into it. So um, I know I want to build this scroll a little bit here, and I want to build this scroll here before I go too much, you know, further with, with all of, you know, with the palms, palm tree, but I definitely, um, uh, want to make sure that I have all the marks that I want for in here uh, done. And so what I like to do is take my dark colors. So again, I'm gonna mix a little bit of blue and my red, and I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow this time, just to have my mud ready, not over mixing it. And I can now go in and darken some of these areas Maybe it's the tops. It's like a, 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 it's a nice weight. Like if you drag it, it really comes out super great. Just want to clean up that edge a little bit. So a nice, trying to think of other places. There's like probably some nice darks that I could add in between these windows perhaps. And now's a really good time to do it because once we add the The palms were not, I don't want to go back in here. So when I'm, when I'm think, when I'm planning a painting, that's how I like to think about it is what do I want to do and what I don't want to go back into and have to do again. And these little edge marks really make a very big difference uh, when you add those little edges to the windows. It really does make a very nice statement. And so I'm just using all of my different size sheet pieces of paper. You may have to cut some to get them to be the right size. I just have enough of them that I could find a good size. That's really all I, you know, that's the only difference here is that I, from having done so many of these that um, I have a lot of them. And of course you always have the option of using a, um, an angled brush and using that edge as well. So if you're a little better with a brush or you're not really comfortable with the paper just yet, I mean, it does take a little bit of practice. I'm not gonna say no, but um, uh, 
you always have that option. And, you know, I do see a little bit of architecture along here on that yellow building all the way that's on the right side. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and I'm going to put it on the long side of one of my pieces of paper. And I'm just going to build that a little bit. So I'm just looking around to see what I could build um, architecturally. And I actually am getting a lot of skips and I like the skips. To me, it just seems a little bit more authentic and not as precision. Okay, um, just, I'm really just um, biding my time till I, you know, can get more of you back um, sort of finished with this part of it. But, you know, if you see like areas that I'm adding in some deeper colors, you may wanna go back in and look at yours. Those, those windows got a little bit more colorful. <laughs> I am fine with that. And again, I'm just sort of going around, moving around the painting a little bit with some architectural details. Because, you know, and I, I, I do feel that like it's important to um, always, you know, well, I mean, Claudia had said she felt she had a mess. Um, so when you do things like this, it sort of helps you get around having a mess, right? You start seeing more of your um, painting coming together when you have details like this. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I could just go in and add details like crazy, but I just want to hold off and, and stick with you guys. You know, you could go in. I'm just adding some other architectural deep, deep colors in uh, beyond the windows a little bit. There's a core bell here. So you could go in and find these nice little details. I'm just using my blue but a lot of paint and not a lot of water right now. So what I'm doing is, is what I would say, making myself happy with details. And what I like to do with a painting, and I know we've, we've talked about this, is have your, go in and out of details, you know, have the details be there and then make yourself happy, see that the painting truly is coming together and then go back to a bigger, broader area. You know, you always have those nice options of giving yourself an opportunity to really, you know, um, enjoy the painting process. I want to do um, the little bit on the buggy next, and um, then I want to go into um, the palm trees because I feel like all of that's going to really matter. The one thing I didn't really give you a very clear drawing of, and I want to discuss that um, as you're painting, is uh, the um, shadow 
I really want it to be a, a better shadow than what I gave to you. I want it to be a, a good shape. And I think that that's really important. So let me go ahead and just find a good shape for you. And then I'll show you, you know, exactly uh, what you'll get, you're gonna wanna pencil this in. So let me go ahead and do that while you're doing your windows. So I kind of drew some lines here on the bottom, but I'm not really happy with them. I want a better, I want a really good shadow. I want a really nice shadow down here. So, and I want it to be less mushy than the one that's there. I want it to be a little bit more definitive. <clears throat> so I'm sort of drawing from the horse and then from the wheels. I don't like this mark here. That's not a good mark. So I'm lightly erasing my shadow marks because I just wasn't happy with them. I want them to be better than that. And, you know, shadows are very, you know, they, they sort of tell you the time of day they, they, they do say a time of day and a direction, right? So that's kind of interesting. So I think that might be an interesting shape right there. Now let's see how that goes. And of course, if there's a shadow on the horses, there's gonna be a little shadow on the car. I'm less interested in that one but I do want it to be there. So what I wanna do next, I definitely wanna get the palm in, the palms, but um, let's get a little bit of the horse uh, buggy in before we go uh, into any other area. So I love the bright red. I think that's great. I do want to um, go in and use, um, I have red on my brush and I'm going in and adding that. Now, there is something kind of nice going on here. This is fringe. So I think that it might be nice that rather than just painting it solid, put your color across the top I have my rigger brush right now. I'll go in a little closer for you guys. And what I'm doing is, is I'm just going to pull some of it down. I don't want it to look overly fringy, you know? I want it to look a little bit fringy, so I'm leaving little white areas. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. So it's the sort of thing that I might do if I was doing feathers, is I wouldn't do it everywhere, because it just gets a little fussy for me. Um, I just like the idea of suggesting that it's fringe. And actually, I didn't even know it was fringe until I looked a lot closer when I was doing the, the, the drawing last night. So the rigger kind of handles this really nicely. And I have a nice deep red here. And, you know, listen, if you want to drop in a little, well, we're going to be adding some blue underneath. So I think we're going to be okay with the red on top. So I draw a line across the top with my rigger. And I kind of like maybe holding onto that white highlight across the top. I'm not sure. I have to see the whole painting. Before I go in and make all these decisions, I wanna see how it looks as a whole. And then we make adjustments from there. Maybe it's just the, the sun hitting the top, you know? It doesn't have to be that little top part that's there. And I'm just pulling it down with a little bit of water and a little bit of color on my brush. Mm 
maybe the wind caught it and it's blowing out a little bit. <laughs> you know, that could be fun, like little little fringes kind of coming, like going to the to the right. I don't know, just kind of thought about that. Even a little action. Now underneath is going to be a deeper red. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is go a little darker with that. So I'm gonna add some of my blue just to deepen it. There is that nice pole there that I am gonna save that. So that little bit of blue added to the red says, oh, this is darker. It's still red, but it's underneath. And I'm gonna pull down the fringe again with that blue and red. Because that's a big part of the conversation. I, you know, I thought that this buggy was just so um, quaint when I saw it, and um, and you get to sort of figure out what 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 brings you to to paint something. That's such an interesting conversation. Um, why do you want to paint something? What's bringing you there to paint it? What is it holding for you? And sometimes it's just the challenge, like, you know, for you guys, you know, I was brought into this painting. Obviously you're here because something about it architecturally or how is she going to approach it or how would I approach it? You know, how would, meaning you, um, you know, how, how, to, how to handle a complex scene like this. And, um, and once you understand sort of the approach, then you get to figure it out, you know, for yourself when you have a complex photo that you want to attempt. And again, I am going in and out of details because I like details. I really do. You'd never, you know, know it from the process, but understanding that I do like to get right there and get the details and just use my little brush and really have some fun with that. I love that. but there's just sort of a time that I, I wanna do it. It kind of feels fun to me. We'll see if we need to do more. It's reading well when I look at the overall. Okay, um, I definitely wanna get that awning in on the right sooner than later. And I want to uh, get into the buggy part a little bit. So that's green, I know it's green. Um, it might be nice to have the green because then we'd have the green in the palm trees. I have a little palm up here and you know here. So it might be nice to sort of introduce some kind of a, a idea of green at this point. I don't want it to be that heavy green, but I think um, starting with the blue on the side of the awning would be nice. And then let's drop a little yellow into it. That's my blue. Let's get a little yellow in there and it will mix together and give you a nice green. So when I do this, I like the idea of 
going in and seeing what's happening in the moment and if I need to charge it up to sort of give me a little bit more um, color or distinction or something. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invite this color. I'm gonna turn my paper because I wanna invite this to come into this other area. So I'm just giving it little bits of opportunities to move into, now that I did that, I can turn the paper back. And let me go in a little closer for you and, and show you where I am. Here I am right here is, it's giving me a nice soft color without going overly heavy with it. So just that little bit of, like I just feel like I opened up a little bit of a dam there. Um, you know, not quite a river, but more like a dam and uh, giving it a little bit more opportunity to have the color bleed in softly. And I don't know what's on there. There's some kind of saying, some kind of texture. I don't really know what it is. Don't really have to go overly, ex, you know, um, depicting all of that. Just drop in a little bit more color in because I do feel this little corner where this is hitting the carriage top probably should have a little bit extra color in it. Okay, um, really wanna get into doing the palm trees with you guys too. But before we do that, let's get some color into our carriage. So here's how I wanna do this. Um, what I'm gonna do is, I mean, I know I see there's a lot of seats there. There's a lot of, there's a lot going on, okay? I'm gonna drop in and I'm gonna hold on to certain little whites going on here and there on those the backs of those um, chairs. And I know that there's little handrails and stuff. I, I, I don't really want to um, go abundantly overboard with those areas. So what I'm doing is, is I'm adding a weak wash of, of um, my blue very weak, but it's pretty watery. The reason why it's weak is because it's watery and I want it to be watery because I want to drop my colors into it. When it comes to the lettering, um, <clears throat> we can hit that. I I'm wondering if everybody has one of those um, white uh, pens, the um, either the jelly rolls or the uni balls, these types of pens I think would come in very handy for doing something like this with this lettering. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Now here, okay, where I wet this area here, that's his body, maybe his shoulder, um, a little bit of, and I, I went right into the carriage. So I'm gonna drop all my colors in because I want it to be deep and rich, but I also want it to blend and go with everything else. So I'm just gonna drop in all of my colors. I'm gonna go over because this plantation, carriage, company, I'm going to paint that in my white. So I'm just gonna go right through it all. So our trilogy again, our red. And I am ignoring a lot of the things that I see on the carriage. So don't think I am not, I am. I just don't want to, I don't feel I need all of that to 
for it for the story to be told. Little orangey color, little red and yellow to just get their heads. If it goes too red, I add blue. If it goes too blue, I add a little yellow. I'm just adding colors to sort of get my, my depth and my saturation. And I am gonna be going right into the wheels for sure. And there's some stuff going on underneath. I could just take that color that I have going on up here and move it around. And I am referencing my photo. I am looking at my photo to see what's going on so I understand how to do what, I'm, what I wanna do. And because it's so wet, I really have a plenty of time to drop in all my colors and move it around and really create some interesting marks with this. So this is where you get to really have your marks do some work for you. And I want the carriage, this is important guys, I want the carriage to be darker than the building, you know, underneath the building awnings and the building window panes. I don't want that to be, um, I, I don't want this to be darker than our carriage. I want the carriage to really be the darkest thing. So just keep dropping in more and more color and letting it really be expressive. And we'll see, you know, if we need to glaze it to be a little bit uh, more one color or if we like the way that it moved, everybody's gonna get a very different result with this because you're using your colors, your way, um, how much you're adding, how much, uh, you know, um, paint to how much water, to how much blue, to how much, you know, um, all of that is going to have an impact on your painting. How great is that? It's not color by book, color by number. And I'm feeling like I'm getting a good amount of color on, on this. I really like what's happening. Do the wheels, you may need to use a slightly thinner brush. So I have like a number, I don't know what it is, number four or something. I'll go in a little closer for you on the wheels. That's where I'm at guys. See that little bit of white at the tip of that wheel really does help the whole story. Little things like that. Um, and if you lost it, don't worry, because we can always um, get it back with a little bit of highlight of white. It's not really a problem. And of course, there is some color going on behind there. So you could invite some of this color to sort of come into your wheel 
just so that it's not stark white behind it. I'll do the spokes last. I don't really need to do those right now. I just like the idea of a little bit of color going into behind the wheels, just a little bit. So just a little bit of hint. You might need to switch to a bigger brush to get some of that wash and just make sure you do change your brushes out. You know, you have them all ready to go and you could change them out at any time. You know, I always have all my brushes sort of ready to go. Just adding a little bit of a nice tint to the, the walkway there. a lot of going on here guys so that's you know um but it seems like you're you're keeping up which is fabulous and of course i just want to keep the horse really really white so what's going to what's going to read white horse is really going to be painting around those legs so you're just getting a little bit of color going on in between their front and back legs. And you have two horses there. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I saw that a little bit later. I'm like, oh, there's two horses. So, you know, the more you look, the more you see, right? And then you're like, well, I don't know if I want to see that much. So then you simplify. Just going in with a smaller brush just to make sure the edges of their little legs look good to me, you know. I do want to give a little tone to them. So I'm just going to deepen the curb a little bit. Okay, let's go back into the trilogy. And I'm trying to feel what's dry around here. I love this triangle. It reminded me of um, when you go to Lancaster and you see the horse and buggies there and they have uh, those triangles on the back. So something that just reminded me of that vision. And of course, the nice red stop stop lights. Those are those two tail lights. They are really great. I want to get those. And I think there's some dark stuff going on underneath here. I don't know what it is, but I think it, it's um, going to read nice if we go a little darker right under here. Uh, you may already have, um, everybody's going to be in a different kind of spot.
So the wheels, I'm kind of on the back wheel now, the very back wheel. You could really do this great with rivers. So I'm dropping like all my colors into this little center area here, and then I'm going to river them out. So there's a lot of color in there and not a lot of water. So I'm just dropping my color in that middle area. And then I'm going to, I'm just going to pull it out with a river, which is just saying um, I'm adding water and I'm pulling these spokes out from that center. And if you need more color, you could tap it in on the center or on the edges. It kind of really moves very nicely that way because the watercolor will follow, you know, the flow of where you're giving it water. I'm not sure, but I think this might have scared a lot of people off. It's, it's definitely more complicated. But it's good for us to be doing these kinds of scenes and getting that experience so it doesn't scare us. what I love is that everything is drawing and I could see every color, but yet when I stand back from it, the colors will really read so beautifully as um, nice tones. Yeah, I like that. So, you know, find yourself details that you want to go into and then pull out and, you know, try other areas. There's some great little like footsteps and things that I want to get in there. It's almost, you know, down here is some good stuff in there. It's almost as if when um, you see uh, the, um, the artists that do all the power lines, right? The power lines just looks like I used to avoid power lines and avoid people. Now I go into, I want to have it all. I want to have power lines. I want to have people. And, I, and the reason why I avoided it was because I didn't really understand how to interpret it and how to paint it. So it was like, I wanted this pristine kind of landscape. And now it's like, oh, throw the people in, throw the, the power lines in. It's all great stuff. It's all just reads, you know, once you know, like you don't have to avoid it, that it's there for the taking. I love that. I love the thought of that, that like, you know, um, when you take a photo, like I showed you guys the first, um, uh, image that I sent to you, you saw the whole picture. And then I sent it to you cropped. So, you know, that's the other thing that we know that just because it's there doesn't mean you have to paint it does not mean that at all. In fact, to me, it's just the opposite. It's like, I got to really edit this out, you know, and really decide what talk what what's speaking to me. So I'm gonna save a lot of those lines. Those will be maybe like the last things we do after we do the shadow. 
was such oh, this I can't, you know, that and the horses. I really want to get into that. I guess it's, I don't know, maybe that's why I paint so fast because I just can't wait to do some of these areas. So I'm like, oh, I gotta get there. I wanna get here, I wanna get there. I wanna go into so many places with my paints. And not every line has to be connected. That's the other thing, you know, um, we. I, you know, use the phrase dots and dashes like a Morse code, you know, you could let the viewer's eye sort of fill in some of your marks. You don't have to give it all there. And what I'm doing right here is I'm just sort of bringing some of the color down just to create a little bit of a shadow under there to give it a little bit of a, uh, you know, not everything is white or light under there just to give it a little bit more oomph. Those, all those bottom things, I really can't wait to get into those. And the, um, the signs that's on the back of the buggy is really looking forward to that, doing that. Um, okay, well, we got the buggy done. The horses I will do with you. I think we can tool some of those, you know, their figures out a little bit. Let me show you where we're at. And that's where we're at so far. When I look at my, on the screen, as you're seeing it, I like what I see. I like where it's reading. Remember to take a pause and put your painting vertical to stand away from it a little bit if you think you're going awry. Chances are you're not, okay? But we do have that fear all the time that we are. So um, that will give you a whole lot better, you know, and, and I hear it like when I'm giving you guys your, um, you know, critique, and I, you know, you hold it up, you're like, oh, it looks better than I thought it did, you know, and, and I hear that a lot, you know, it's kind of funny, but, um, but that's, that's just the way it is. We are looking at things, um, you know, on top of it, three inches from our noses. So, um, so let's do two things next. Let's work on the horses. And, um, and then I want to show you how to do the palm trees and we'll see how far we get because um, we're going into two hours now. I want to get the car and the horses, shadow, um, palm trees, and I'm going to try to do it in one clean sweep. So we're going to go a little bit faster here. So I'm going to take my the mixture that I had before uh, that was in my palette. So I call this palette mud because it's kind of like, I don't know, it's not really any color. So I could just sort of take my palette and I could just say, oh, this corner, I just have some, it's all colors, but together they sort of create this, you know, like I said, I call it palette mud. So if you need to mix up a little palette mud, it should look kind of a little grayish. And what I wanna do is I wanna tool out the horse's shapes. So what I mean by that is I want to go under their bellies a little bit and then feather it up. So just to give their little bodies, big bodies, a little bit of dimension. So just a little bit of palette mud will help define it. And then, of course, all of those reins and, and all of their, um, their regalia that they have on them is also going to very much define. It is how clothes define um, a body. You know, these little areas here will give us a nice um, idea of what's going on, that there's something, you know, that there, there's some shape to them. 
and it was a little hard to see in the photo. I'm not going to kid you that of where you know the horses are, but we're gonna we're gonna get there. So just a little bit of um, a little bit of a light wash gray is really what this is, but it's not gray. It's palette. It's all the colors of my palette, but it just sort of starts giving them a little bit of body, a little bit of dimension. And of course, we're going to build all of those other things that are going on a little bit more. So not a whole lot there. Um, as far as the car is concerned, um, <clears throat> The car is really something that all we have to do is find a, um, uh, a, the back windshield is really what we need, a little reflection and then the car itself. So if we want the car to be on the bluish side, you know, we'll take our, our bluish color. The top is sort of gonna be a little bit, um, uh, a highlight there a little bit of the window. And then it, it, it's such a funny thing that these cars are really just kind of rectangles, you know, they're just rectangles, that's what they are. And we just have to follow some of those shapes. We don't have to make it um, with em enormous precision because it's a car, you know, it's just not necessary. Um, unless we are painting our truck or something like that, where we really do want to go into a lot of precision. You want the red tail lights, which are fabulous. They say that's the back of the car. Two little dashes. That's all you need. And as you come underneath the car, you're going to want to have a little bit darker. You want it to have a little bit more um, richness to it just and go right into the tires you don't have to separate the car and the tires just go right into them that's you know let them come on down and because people know what a car that that reads car it's so little that i did but it reads car and that's what i love about it again these things used to make me very afraid very scared to do these things until i realized that they really are just um more shapes they're just shapes that we define and we find. And um, so there's sort of that juxtaposition. And of course I wanna go in and do that shadow right now, but we're gonna wait a little bit on the shadow. I wanna do that with you. And the same red that's here, right, is here. Same red, carries you right through. And we are going to, the one color, other color that I wanna do, and we're gonna do it later, is gonna be our indigo. I'm going to add a lot of details with indigo, okay? This has gotta dry, this has gotta dry. I wanna go to the top, and I want to show you how, we'll see how far we get with them. I'll, you know, I want to do the palms, the palm trees. Okay, so let's go in and do that. Okay, so I want to use my blue and my yellow. That's the colors I'm going to use. I'm not going to go with a green. And so what you want to find is um, the center. So this was the, the, let's start on this one. Okay, so... This is the center of the palm. I'm using my rigger and I have blue and yellow and I'm just gonna go back and forth between my blue and my yellow and I'm going to pull, just like we did the fringe, pull out. Now, I know there's gonna be a tendency to make every single one of them perfect lined up like that. Don't do that mess them up because it will just be too fussy and you don't really need that kind of fuss, especially up here. The littlest marks is really gonna say palm. 
So you need to think about adding water to move them around a little bit and go, now you're gonna, now you're gonna know why we did all that wash in the beginning. Well, you guys probably know by now why we do that, but um, you know, I like to do a wash initially and the yellow, the blue should be on the bottom and the yellow should be on the top. So if you're doing the bottom, add more blue. And if you're doing the top, add more yellow. They're gonna mix anyway. You know, you're gonna have that green color come about because that these two colors, that's what they do. They make, you know, that's that we're dealing all primaries. And we don't do this that often, by the way. We really don't, where we're just dealing with primaries, but I thought it would be kind of fun to isolate just three colors. And I do that sometimes where I just pr predominantly um, will use three colors. I'll add other colors as well. I'm hard pressed not to add violet, although we have not added violet to this painting. Um, I'm hard pressed not to use any indigo or dragon's blood, but we have not right now added any dragon's blood. It's shocking, but um, I will be adding indigo for sure, positively to um, bring about uh, the other colors because that is going to be our contrast is the indigo. So you could see, I've got a lot of colors going on here, right? I have a lot of colors I have, um, but I also making sure that it's, I'm pulling things out and letting the colors and the water do a lot of the work for me. And you don't have to, I could, I could build, you know, little areas that go beyond and your eye will fill it in. The eye will fill it in. I'm adding more blue on the bottom. Just using my rigger. There goes a brush. Went one flying. <clears throat> and then I'm using more yellow on the top. And that looks like a fun palm tree to me. I like it. Now we can also add some of our red. Um, oh, somebody wants to come in. Um, <clears throat> we can add some red to the bottom because if you look, the palm tree does have a little bit of red. So that's okay too. Don't stick with one color, right? Add some red. It's just so much fun to paint this way with all these colors. Well, it's three colors, which is kind of interesting. Oh, so let me just tell you that, um, is it next week? Next week, I think it is, we have Andy Evanson coming into the Firefly. Uh, uh, well, he's not coming in, one day he will come in, but for now he's doing a virtual class for us to sort of introduce you guys to his work. He's, uh, one of my students had told me about him years ago and um, I'm very much looking forward to him coming in and uh, showing us what he's all about. So if you haven't signed up, I think it's a wonderful opportunity to get a feel for what you might gain when he does, I'm saying when, when he does come to town and, and is paints with us in Northport. All right, I'm kind of happy with that one. The other thing that I would do is, um, and I'm gonna do it later, I would splatter just to give that feeling of the um, palm a little bit more. Uh, feel. I'll do the second one, which is coming right off of here. Uh, you may or may not get as far as I do, but I will be sure that it's on the recording. So um, if we don't finish everything in class, I will uh, continue and finish the painting so that you'll have the full recording. 
but I do want to take a pause and make sure that I critique everybody that came into class. And now how little do those windows, they're hardly, you know, they're there, but we don't have to think about them anymore. I love that. And to me, palm trees are kind of fun. Like the more, the more I suggest them, the happier I am. That's just me. I just love that. And I, I think the question is, is how much do you have to say for it to read as a palm tree? And um, I like to give the information to my viewer, but I don't want it to dominate. See, I, I felt that the palm trees were super important because of where it was, where, where this is, you know, you don't, this kind of architecture and this kind of uh, horse and buggy, you know, you don't see that in every town that you go into. So I, I felt it was important to say where I was and um, what, what was, you know, what, what's my storyline here? I just dropped a little red in, let it spread, let it go. Now I have more red on my brush, but I'm going for my blue and I'm getting a, uh, a violet. Fine, whatever. The shapes will tell me exactly what I wanted to say. And make sure that they overlap each other, that they're not like all uh, separated from each other. You want them to touch. You don't want it to be... Oh, it's very colorful. I really like the way this is coming out. I've done palm trees in the past. I wasn't thrilled with them, but I'm happy with what I see here. I don't, you know, every painting doesn't come out exactly as I expect it to. It's just, that's just painting. But if we don't take the risk and try, you know, we we'll never get there. So I applaud you guys coming in week after week and going, trying so many different techniques and so many different subject matter and so many, you really are amazing um, people. I applaud that, I really do, because it's, uh, you know, well, you know what, also it's our new norm. That's the other part of it is that, you know, this whole thing is so unusual and strange that you know, I've been doing this for several months now and uh, it, it feels good. It feels good to have a sense of place and a sense of purpose and a sense of belonging and a, sen a place that we could come to and really enjoy ourselves and escape from everything. <laughs> I like to escape. I really do. I really would want to escape. I know a lot of you have that travel bug that I have. So now you could see why I, when I drew it and I gave you the contour that you did not, um, I didn't really go into heavy details with that. And this is the reason why I wanted my brush to have more of the expression going on. I didn't want to have it be uh, overly uh, figured out when I went in. That was, that was why my brush mark, my pencil marks that I gave you were very, very loose and very, you know, suggestive. Uh, let me pull back and there we are. There we have our palm trees. And of course we could play around with them from here to kingdom come. I really just wanted to show you guys how, um, how I sort of got that. And you just don't want too much of a pattern. You want to interrupt any little patterns that you see going on with a little water, with an extra color. Um, just going to drop in a little bit of water. And I do want to splatter some of this. I think that'd be really, really cool to do. And guess what? Any little area that you're not happy with on your painting in the background, guess what? you can add palm tree palms to it, fronds, whatever they're called. 
So if you see something you're really not happy with, you have that option of um, disguising it. And your eye will go here. Now there's one more that's over here. Um, I know you probably are working on this one. I wanna go into the horse. Well, there's a couple of things I wanna do. And I know we're running like it's two hours now, but um, if anybody has to go, I understand. And I will send the recording to you. Um, but, um, and I do wanna help you guys with a critique as well. Now, this one over here, I'm going to just say it, I'm going to make it lighter and I'm going to make it a little bit more featherier because I don't want my eye um, overly uh, distracted here. So I'm just going to sort of keep it a little waterier and a little bit, um, a little bit more um, on the just lighter side, a little waterier side of, of things because I don't, I want the suggestion of the palms here, but I don't want my eye drawn to that corner heavily. Okay. So I'm keeping it lighter. And I want to go right over that window. Again, if there's something you're not happy with, just add, add palm tree to it. <laughs> Why not? Nobody's going to say, wait a minute, there is no palm tree there. You went over too far. All they're going to see is the beauty in your painting. Okay, that's all I really want to do in that corner. Very light, very watery, very suggestive. That's my way of approaching um, an area that I don't want to call out and have it be all that much attention there. Now, there's three things that I want to do that are left, or a bunch of things. I want to go in and add some more architecture up here. And I just want to show you how to do it so that you can do it on your own. But I'm going to take, to me, now's the time for my indigo. And let's see, what kind of brush am I going to use? I may have to turn, yeah, because I, I like my my indigo and my rigor to sort of glide along. So I'm just gonna turn my paper because I want, I want to lock in my hand and my brush. I'm not doing this, I'm doing this. It's a very, very big difference. Okay, so let me just get up here and let me just get some of these um, architectural marks. The other way you could do these, by the way, if you're not great with your straight lines or your rigor, guess what? Go ahead and use your um, paper. So I do feel this is an important part because it gives starts giving us contrast. You'll see it in one second. Let me just um, get some of these marks down here. Sort of went a little amok, but I'm going to fix that right now with just a little bit of water. So I'm using my indigo because I do really feel it needs some contrast up here. And there's some beautiful architectural pieces that I would like for you to put in. This is going very dark, like right under here. There's core bells there, whatever they're called. And so I, I'm just adding some depth, some dark and detail right in here. Contrast, boom. It starts really working so um, perfectly when we understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. And I'm just letting my brush sort of dance around these core bells. I do know those, those students that will do these like absolutely perfectly. And I think that that's a marvel. I don't really um, have that desire to spend that much time on something that I don't want my eye to be overly drawn to. So that's just my take. And that's my... Um, my, my feeling about why I do what I do. You have to decide that for yourselves, what, why you would 
go in there and do it. That's your style. That's what your approach is. That's what you want to do. Um, for me, it's not. If I can learn to suggest, and I think that the suggestion does give me um, a great amount of, uh, of, of enjoyment that I can make a suggestion with some marks and I could, um, you'll know what it is without the um, overabundance of detail. And again, if you're not great with the brush, no worries. You have your uh, paper, which is nice and straight and will really help you through these, these marks. And they really do work so well. And um, I guess you guys let me know if it's okay that we ran, a, we go a little bit over today. I kind of had a feeling we might because it's just a, a lot of painting, but I think we got a lot done in, a, in two hours, real lot. So this is my indigo and I love it because it gives me such beautiful contrast. Color gets the credit, contrast does the work. Always. And when you when you have a painting that doesn't have contrast, it has a tendency to look a little weaker, not as strong. And when you start adding contrast, you start seeing the strength in the painting. Now I did say that I wanted to go in and do a little bit more work on these um, uh, on these three arches. So I would do that with my indigo, and I would just find some shapes of the dark shadows. And that's how I'm gonna do it. Just a little bit of a hint of that. Because it really is such beautiful architecture going on there. And we could go back in and tweak any of this a whole lot more than that if we need to. And now I feel like that really, it kind of, it, 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 what it did visually for me is this dark sort of brings me through the trees and comes down. You see how we built it to do that for ourselves. And that really is so, when you understand that that's how to go about it is really so powerful. The understanding of why we did what we did. Um, I do want to show you the lettering. I want to build the details on the horse on, on all of that and the shadow. And I feel like that will be a really good way to, for us to, um, you know, stop at that point. I'll continue to stay on. If you want to continue to stay on and paint with me, that's fine. I'll stay on and finish it and talk everybody through it. Okay. So that's up to you. Um, and I think I might have lost a couple people, but I understand you'll get, you know, you're going to get the recording. Okay, back to my indigo. I'm going to take, well, there is some red on them also. With my fine rigor brush, you want to, guys, you know how we talk about like the collar that goes around the neck and over a clavicle and whatnot. That's what we're doing here. We are defining the shape of the horse his head and all of these things with these dark marks. So I'm going to say it now. They're important. Take your time. If you want to wait on doing this and do it later, that's fine. I get it. I just want to have as much as I can here on the recording for you guys. And I can't see a lot of what's going on, which is, you know, um, we just have to suggest it. And that's really gonna do the trick is all of this little bit of finding his shapes and these harnesses and things like that. You know, this, this harness here, this is the barrel of his chest. So 
it's, you know, very important that you follow that around his body and underneath. Really critical. Because Dan, guess can you bring that in a little closer? I sure can. Thank you. Okay. Where am I? There, there I am. Thank you for that suggestion. That's a great suggestion. Um, yeah. So um, when you add details like this, people are going to think, oh, my God, look at all that detail. And you're going to be like, yeah, I didn't really do a whole lot of detail on this. This is just not, you know, I'm using my rigor. It's a very, it's, I think it's a number one rigor. Really like this, this brush. I've, I've been using it more and more. I just, um, I'm not sure. I like it better than a, um, a small brush. It, and, and it is a small brush for sure, but I don't know, it gives me some kind of control a, and lack of control, if you know what I mean. It does a little bit of both for me. And I, I don't know, I just really enjoy working on this with this brush. It took me a while to, at first I didn't really understand like, oh, oh, what's so great about a rigor? But boy, when I got it, I was like thrilled with it. And I started playing with it. Now there's some bag there. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Is that a poop bag? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I'm just going to paint a little bit of that shape. There's all kinds of things, harness things. I don't really know all the things from that a horse has on it, you know, that requires them to be able to do what they do. But I do also want to get that red in that's around their necks. I think that's a beautiful, again, a beautiful mark. And when you add details like this at the end, and hopefully you guys are seeing that, um, that uh, you know, you're starting to see that your painting is taking shape because you're adding the finer details now. And you're getting outside of that, oh my God, I have a hot mess, which I get, I understand that perfectly. And I go there often myself and I look at it and I'm like, what a mess I got, but I know how to get myself out of it. And I know that I'm not done. And I know that there's more to be done, a lot more to be done. So what I say, and I know you guys have heard me say it before, don't judge it too fast. I've seen people throw out paintings, walk out of class, frustrated, um, didn't come out the way they wanted or, but they weren't done. You know, they weren't done. So, and when you understand that there's, um, you just have to understand that it's got to be finished. And, you know, listen, at the end, you may or may not be happy with it. It's hard. I, I can't say that for certain, but don't give up. Keep going. Because it's just so much great stuff. And you know what? Finishing a painting that you're not necessarily... Um, you didn't think was going to come out good. There's a lesson in that. There's a big lesson in that. Um, really very valuable uh, and will give you a whole lot of, um, there's, there's, there's good stuff in just knowing that, oh, um, I didn't think I was going to get where I am and look at where I got to because I, I took it on. I, I didn't uh, give up. And I really, 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 really want to go in and get some of these lines now 
that are connecting all of this under, oh, there's a red under there too. Okay, there's this. <laughs> the more you look, the more you see, there's this nice red going through that pole or whatever it is, I don't know. But I like it. And so um, back to my indigo, using my rigor. And there's great stuff under here. Oh my goodness, this is just good stuff. All of these poles kind of connecting underneath. And to me, this is the power lines, you know? So I really want to have these in here. Maybe that's the little step that they step on. I don't know. I don't have to know. I don't have to have all the answers. I just have to find the shapes that I want to paint. That's all I have to do. The marks that I want to make. There's this little thing coming down here and the little L thing. I don't know what all this stuff is. There's another one here. I'm using a lot of color and not a lot of water. So I could get nice, deep, dark marks. There's, and I will tell you this, there's nothing perfect about what I have going on here. Absolutely nothing. It's all suggestive. Adding some darks, adding some darks, adding some nice, rich, deep indigo darks. If you want to sort of separate like signs and um, poles and uh, seats that you saw there, you know, all of those little things, you can. I don't know how much of that I want to do. We'll just have to see. But those are the things that you could go back in and do at any time. And certainly the amount that you do will most definitely bring about your um, your style. So important. So here, um, I can't really see my my lettering anymore, but <clears throat> I know it says 153. I'm going to test this on a piece of paper and make sure it, it is working. Okay, that's working pretty good. I find the jelly rolls are a little better than the uni balls. These dry up on me or they're not as good. So the je white jelly rolls, and these come in different colors. I haven't really tried the other colors, but the jelly roll is the one I like the best. It always seems to work for me. So I'm going to add the 153. And if you're not up to this, I totally get it. And it does say um, plantation, carriage, company.com. I do not want to spell that out, but I am going to do it here underneath here. So the way that I do that is um, I have it underneath here. So I can kind of pencil, I can see my pencil a little bit. So plan, this is where you like forget a letter because your <laughs> plantation carriage. Easy to run out of space, which I did do, company. But that's the idea. And it, it says plenty. I don't have to have it read more than that. And this jelly roll is also great. If you lost any whites and you want to get them back, this is a great way to do it. There's a little bit of color in one of his ears, the horse's ear. I want to get that. Just a tiny bit. And I want to get the shadow. 
So I basically have showed you everything that I would do to, um, you know, I would go back in, I would definitely do more architecture, um, but I wanna also be sure that I give you guys um, a, uh, a critique as well and see where you're at. I wanna see where everybody is at. Um, so what was I just gonna do? I forgot. I think I, think I wanna go into the shadow now. I think that would be a really good thing to do. So my shadow is gonna be a combination of, and I do see that I lost some people, but I do wanna to talk to you guys. If you guys stay on, we could select what we're gonna do next week. Um, and I think that'll be the last class, except for the, um, the, uh, the one that I'm doing of the holiday, uh, holiday uh, imagery. So what I wanna do here is I wanna add a shadow. I'm gonna start with my blue. And I have a shape that I'm sort of mimicking the, that what, what might happen if I were, um, if the sun were beating down. It, right now it looks like it's very overhead. So it's very much just underneath the carriage. But I want this to be a little bit more interesting than that, okay? So I'm gonna add my blue and I'm gonna add a little bit of my red to it. So it goes into a violet color and maybe even a tiny bit of yellow. The, you know, the yellow you gotta be careful about because it's so heavily concentrated um, that Quin Gold is really powerful, a really powerful color. So I'm imitating and I'm sort of just um, making up a shadow that might come from this horse and buggy. And I'm just giving it an odd shadowy shape. I've seen this done um, many times uh, with just Payne's Gray, but I don't even own Payne's Gray. So I can't use it. <laughs> and I had a teacher that used to say Payne's Gray, uh, he used to call my indigo Payne's Gray and I'm like, yeah, it's really not. <laughs> but so I'm underneath the horse's feet here and and just carrying out some what might be, I mean, shadows are funny little shapes, you know, it depends on the time of day and it depends on, you know, a whole lot of things, um, you know, where the sun is at, right? But I think that reads as shadow. Let me back out of it and I'll show you what I mean. It reads as shadow. And I actually have all three colors in there. And I just created some weird little shape to kind of, and I want to do the same thing on the car. I think underneath the car might have to go a little heavier, maybe a little bit more um, uh, indigo in there, but those are things that we could always go back and decide later on. I could definitely see going back in and adding um, more architecture into these areas here, some words, you know, some of the words that are there, the Elvis lounge and things like that. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, but I wanna be sure you guys get a critique in too. And then I'll go back in and I will finish painting. Who wants to stay on could stay on. If you have to go, I totally get it. The idea for me for a shadow is I want it to be continuous. I don't want it to look like I pieced it together. So that's a little tricky. You know, that's definitely, it's definitely a little tricky to do it that way. But I think that there's a lot to gain from that um, when you think about it that way. If you have a little bit of Jean Brillion, these little highlights that are on the, the that's a little heavy jam. Let me lighten that up a little bit. Got a little heavy. Okay, there. So just took it off. So uh, again, little Jean Brillion. 
to just do, see those nice little highlights that are on the the chairs. And there's all kinds of really cool little highlights that you could go back in and, and do as well. Just to suggest something's going on. And that really does say a whole lot's going on. Um, I know that there's a lot of things going on in here. I really didn't feel like depicting that. If you lost the highlights on their little uh, shoulders or the top of their head, you can definitely go in and, and read and, and do that also. And what I wanna do also is just do that Elvis lounge thing. And I think that there's a lot of nice architectural things like we did up on top here that we could do throughout, you know, um, other, I want to do that there, but you know what, I'm going to stop here guys, because I want to see where everybody is at and, um, and then I'll go back in. So let's keep going. I'm just going to show you how to do, we just added the shadow, which I feel is real, a real connector. And there's a couple of things that I want to do. Like I want to add the Elvis lounge here. And um, I know it's light, but rather than doing what I would call reverse definition, I'm just going to paint it in red. Okay. I have a very fine little brush here. I'm just going to get some red on my brush and I'm just going to give it, but you know what, I'm going to go a little closer for you guys so that you can see what I'm doing. And there is a little bit of a 3D here, you know? So I'm just going to, I can see my, um, my pencil marks on here. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a suggested um, part of this. So um, as I was saying before, you know, it, um, you know, if any part of a drawing or painting overwhelms you, you don't have to do the whole thing. You could just do a part of it. And you don't have to, you know, I, and I applaud you guys when you do come in and you do take the whole Megillah on. That's just extraordinary and, and, and very brave. You know, it really is. These are not, th this is not an easy painting to do by any stretch. So I'm just sort of suggesting Elvis Lounge right there. Um, there is this um, uh, oval here. And I'm just going to paint that because these little details, when you do these little details, they really do. People just think you, you know, really what you, what, what you did was just so um, much. And it's really not as much as you might think. So sometimes these little details say, detail without a whole craziness. And of course, you know, I know the students that would come in and do every single little mark, but, um, but um, the idea here is that you could always go in and add marks. You know, that's always something that you could go in and do. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be. I like when I see br uh, your, the, the, the brush um, marks, maybe I'm seeing, um, you know, some strength in, in a mark or in a, um, uh, you know, um, a shadow or whatever it is. I like to see a style coming out and hopefully that's what's happening for you guys is that you are feeling a style sort of coming approaching and you're going to say, Oh, I don't think I have a style, but you know what, if you didn't have a style, your, your painting would look like everybody else's and it doesn't, it looks like you, you know? So um, <laughs> that's this interesting part about this is that you, your style really, you're, there's no way for your style not to come out. Okay, there really is just no way for that to happen. Your style will always come out one way or another. Um, and the more you paint, the more you start saying, wow, I really don't look like anybody else as I really am discovering that I do have a style. 
So I'm just going back in and, and handling some of the darker pieces that I wanted to do before. We just had to wait for it to dry. Jan, do you have uh, photos for next week? Um, I do. Do you guys want to like take a look at them? Yeah. Okay. Just give me one moment and we will do that in one second. So yeah, I like when you guys choose and there's only a handful of you want, but you know, you stayed on, you get to choose. Okay. So I'm just going back in and adding some details to just sort of suggest it. Um, so really what I want to do now is I want to find all the different ways that I need the details to make this appear a lot more detailed than it really is. And there's a couple of things that I could do. I could add more darks along here, which I think I want to do. And I could even with, um, this is a really good technique, okay? I'm going to take my flat edge brush with just a little water on it, and I can actually lift some of the whites that maybe you want to have in the windows behind the horses ever so slightly. So when you do this on dry paper, what happens is, is it pushes the paint aside, particularly when you have a sharp, uh, very edgy, this is a really good point D edged, flat edge um, uh, angled brush. And I love it for this. And now I could go in and I could just ever so slightly suggest a lot of detail, but it's not white. Maybe there's doors, there's windows. I don't know what there is. And the point is, is that I don't have to over uh, indulge um, myself with too much of that, just a little bit. And it really does pick it up really nicely. Oh, that just, you know, oh, really looks really good. I really love doing this. And this way you don't have to fuss with all of those details in the background. You could even take this I'll show you a nice technique. You could take this and sort of just brush some diagonals and it sort of looks like window. Let me go in a little closer on that one. I'll just show you what I mean. So I just have water on my brush, no paint. And now what I'm doing is, is I'm adding some reflections, right? I'm just adding some reflections and look at how that just looks like window now. It's such a fun way to work. And somehow I like reflections to look vertical. I mean, um, diagonal, not vertical, not horizontal. Just brightens it up a little bit. And it, it's not making it go white, but it is lifting it ever so slightly. Okay. The other things that I think would make me really happy is adding some more dark. So I'm gonna go in and grab some of my indigo. This is not Payne's gray, guys. It is indigo. And I'm going to just go ahead and just architecturally add some nice darks. There's a lot of architectural things going on here and we could suggest every one of them or some of them. How much of that you do is really gonna depend on your own style. I'm really happy with um, so many pieces of what happened on this painting. And I will tell you this, I'm not always, I'm not always so happy. But this one, I, I, I think I got enough things on it that I'm happy. And now what I'm doing is, is I'm just making myself that much happier with these beautiful dark details. And when you add these little details, it really does spark up the painting. When you add your darks and you add, oh, and I know I wanted to do this um, architectural thing on the top here. I just really thought this was so pretty. And um, really, I it's the only when you sort of see this kind of um, 
pattern or something going on here. I don't know exactly all the things that you'd call it architecturally, but there's something really nice going on there. Maybe like a little crown thing going on. I don't know. And you don't have to know to be able to just suggest something. I did not have this in my contour drawing, but I'm, I really am observing my, um, my uh, source, my, my photograph. I really am paying close attention so that I could get some of this beautiful architecture that's there using my rigor, using indigo. I do want it to just melt behind the um, palm tree there. And these um, core bells are just so beautiful that are on each of the buildings. Those scrolly little things. I don't know if this is like an awning that's here. I'm not really sure what this is, but I'm just gonna melt this into my, um, into my palm tree there. And to my architecture on my windows. And now I could take my indigo and you could do this either with your brush, if you go with your brush or with your um, paper. And you could really go in and just really amp up some of these different parts of the windows. Makes a big difference. Color gets the credit, contrast does the work. And sometimes, you know, if I feel I have a little bit, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I take a look at it and I, I wait to see, like, did it, did I ruin something or is it okay? Or I'm not really always so quick to just dismiss what, what could have been a mistake. I'm not very, I'm okay with letting it, standing back and looking at it. And there's some kind of like little topper thing on this top of this. So I love street lamps. So there's no street lamps in this photo, but these little um, architectural things really do speak so beautifully to um, the town and the things that go on there. So you wanna get some of those things if you can. been using my rigor so much it's actually coming apart I might have to order another one so I'm just adding some darker marks to my palm tree that would be the shadows underneath it you know they beef it up they really add such interest so quickly So what am I doing now? I'm just moving around my painting and seeing where I want some darks to go and how I want the eye to move around the painting. 
So I really want a connection to get me into here. So um, I have maybe like that little shadow or drain pipe right here, the side of the building to sort of get me from the top into this dark area. And now I'm just carrying it through the palm tree into around this way. So it's sort of keeping our eye there. That's why I don't want too much on either side. Not too much here. I really didn't add a sky, but I think we could. It's, it's, it seems a little barren that I didn't add a sky and usually I, I would add a sky. So I think we probably could. Oh, I did say, mm, I'm gonna get my toothbrush and I do want to um, splatter a little bit around my palm trees. So I'm just gonna go into my palette, get some palette mud and just splatter a little bit. Oh. God, I love splatter. It just makes it feel so much more festive. Can't explain it, but I love it. That feels good. I like that. It's a good disruptor. feel like maybe I need a little bit of texture over here. Let's see. Flip that a little bit. Again, I don't want my eye to be drawn over here, but I don't want it to look unfinished either. So the way that you think about finishing a painting is now's the time to do all the little details that you probably, without realizing it, you would have started with. I don't know how to approach it, so I'm going to add every little detail to depict the scene that I want to, that I have in front of me, right? And this is the way to do it later on. I like putting the details on top of my washes and my big areas. Just seems to make good sense so that I'm not overworking it too much or at all. And when you add contrast, what you wanna be sure you do is that you have a lot of paint on your brush and not a lot of not a lot of water, that's really important. And again, if there's any areas that you sort of wanna get a little bit darker and you're not that good with your brush, just stamp it with your paper. It's a nice way to work and it does so much you can add these anywhere you could just, because remember it's, you know, it's about finding um, places to really have some nice deep darks. That's really what I'm doing right now. I'm just looking for any little opportunity to have, um, add some contrast. and I'm doing it with my indigo. Okay. 
And there's, there's something else I want to say, and that is, is that just because you do something in one spot doesn't mean you have to do it in every spot. So what do I mean by that? Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm adding a little dark just in this area here. I don't have to do it everywhere. I don't have to do it in every spot. I could feather this out to where I could suggest some other marks or whatever things going on, but I don't want it to be everywhere. So, um, you know, it doesn't have to be something that, you know, you are stuck with finishing something that has to go um, in every area. So every window doesn't have to look the same. Every arch doesn't have to look the same. Every dark doesn't have to be all the way across. You know, you could just find places to really spark it up. And when you start doing that again, that's where you start saying, well, I'm maybe now I'm looking less at my photograph and more at my painting and I'm giving my painting what it needs as opposed to before working it where I needed to, you know, really have it be, I was looking at the photograph for, um, guidance as to what to do next. Now I really don't have to do that. I can really have, um, I could just look around and say, well, what do I want to add to the painting? Where, where is it calling for me to do some more um, interest or some more darks or whatever it is? So that's just sort of what I'm doing now is just finding those spots that might require a nice deep dark color. Nice deep dark, the contrast, the um, those little details. I really love the splatter. <laughs> I know, what can I say? Some more palette mud. I think I'm just going to give some of these, tr these um, A little bit more to the windows. And again, what you do in one spot, eh, you know, you do it in others. If you do it everywhere, it's sort of predictable, but maybe in a couple of spots that are showing through. Just finding little areas that really make sense to um, the car, a little bit more detail on the car. Indigo is a great place to, to add those nice details. When we, we've, here, well, a while ago, we were doing a lot of trucks. And it was interesting because we were using a lot of colors on the trucks, very rusty and very, um, uh, um, you know, and they almost looked like just psychedelic until we added the indigo. And the indigo was the glue that, um, that really brought the whole thing together. It was very interesting. I just have some drips over here. Um, so it was kind of interesting. I do think I need a little bit of color here and here on the corners. So I'm going to take my brush. I'm just going to add a little bit of a grayish blue, I think. So that would be like an indigo color. Very light. I'm just going to add a little bit of a hint of a sky. I didn't do it before, but I think it just looks wrong at being just white just a, a hint of color. Um, and you could suggest clouds by once it's wet, you could just drop a little extra color in and let it move around. And that'll suggest, you know, some maybe a gray cloudy day. So what that is, is really just letting the paint do the work for you and create a little bit of a sky. It's a little bit of timing there. And I do think here, I'd like to add a little tone as well. Um, I am going to break 
out from this trilogy color. And I'm gonna use a color that actually has a lot of these colors in it. And that would be my Shadow Violet. Now, the interesting part of Shadow Violet is when you put it on initially, it looks gray, but it breaks into pinks and blues. So we definitely, because pink is like a light red, it does give us an ability to have a little bit of tone here. It also is a Daniel Smith color that breaks apart beautifully. So you can see it sort of goes on and it looks gray. Okay. I'm going to glaze over my shadows and just so that they go a little bit darker. And this color is going to just say there is a street here because the street wouldn't be white. Carving out their legs a little bit here. Okay. And now what that did was it deepened the shadow a little bit, right? Because we glazed over it and we have a little bit of tone on our street. So just a little bit. It, I don't normally paint to the edges like this, but this painting really kind of called for it. And what it did was it just deepened our shadow a little bit because I glazed right over it. And I feel like I need to like let it rest to determine what else I might wanna do to it. So I think and, and the way that I do that, and I've talked about this before in class, I'm just gonna glaze this as pinky orange color is a little bit too um, stark for me. So I'm glazing over it with a little bit of blue. Yeah, and I like that, that looks better to me. It kind of goes with the rest of the painting a little bit more. Oh, there is something else I could do. Um, this is interesting. I'm gonna take a little bit of my shadow violet and maybe add a little bit of, to follow this shadow here, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow to the windowsills, just ever so slightly, just to give it a little bit. It's only, there's only a couple that I could really add it to, maybe this one and that one, not really a lot that I could do with that one. But this is how you evaluate and look at a painting and see how much more you might need or want to do. Um, I want to point out that I ended this palm tree right here and it's sort of hitting just the edge of the arc, the, the ceiling, the, the, um, the roof line. I am going to break that up. I want to disturb that and I want to go past it so that it goes into the sky a little bit. So when you see area, it's a little wet, the sky, so it's kind of mushing a little bit, but um, when you see something that just ends up on an edge of something, push it a little further and build it a little bit beyond um, the uh, what you see in the photo. It's really such a great way to, um, uh, you know, sort of help your painting be a little bit more on the interesting side and. Um, I can't really do it there because it's still wet. So let me just lighten that yellow that, that I started there. I will go beyond that. And you can even splatter it. That, that might be a fun way to do it also. That could be fun. And I reach a point where I just have to let it um, rest and I need to take a break from it. And so what I do is, and I've talked about this before, what I do is I will put it in um, on top of a frame that has a mat in it already. And I will see if there's anything more that I need to do to um, complete it. So what am I doing here? I'm just sort of giving some dry, thirsty brush marks 
just to sort of say, mm, there's stuff going on in this store here. And I don't have to describe exactly what it is. And I really love my um, rigor for this, really just does such a great job. I want to make sure I have all the little gizmos underneath. Because I really love those little marks. I don't even have to know what they are. It doesn't really matter. And I think this is the time that I just say, hmm, I think I need to pause and maybe <clears throat> take my mat board, which is cut into two pieces and just see it. I don't want the white side. Just see it as, as if it's framed and matted. Nope, do it this way, Jan. Okay, that way and this way. And that sort of helps you and then, of course, putting it vertically helps also. And that, I think, is as far as I want to go right now. I don't know if I want to go any further than that, but I think I achieved everything I wanted to with it. Um, maybe, maybe a little more splatter up there might. Oh, that did it. It just extends it. A little further. <laughs> I do love splatter and drips. They make me very happy. All right, guys. Well, um, thanks for hanging out with me today. And um, I, uh, I will send you the final piece uh, along with the recording and the drawing. Um, if you didn't get the contour drawing, I'll, I'll include that also. So you have everything you need. Um, and again, if this looks overwhelming to you, it's just too much, do less. Don't have to do it all. Just because it's there doesn't mean you have to, um, to paint it all. So I applaud you guys for coming on and taking um, a really uh, a very involved painting, a very involved photograph and going for it. And, you know, it took us a little longer than usual, but you know, it's great. It's all good, you know? So have a great one. I'll see you the next time I see you. All right. You guys take care. I'll send everything to you. Bye now.